All right, everybody, welcome. So two breaking news that happened just a few minutes ago. We've got Dr. Scott Walter here in the humanoid industry space. You've got Sanctuary dropping a video, which we're gonna watch right now, of their Phoenix humanoid bot being able to uh, basically now work doing autonomous, completely autonomously, but doing it at a human equivalent speed. This is one of the very first times we're watching a, a humanoid bot doing some task at humanoid speed. At the same time, we also have um, Digit Abil Agility, the uh, robotics who has a robot called Digit, and they are working seven point hours straight. This is again, the first time they've been, you'll see the demo where the, the bot is working much longer than just a one or two minute video. We're going to break all this down. We're going to compare this to all the recent breaking news that we've had in the last few days on figure on, on Tesla bot. Welcome Scott. How are you doing? Hello, Herbert. Yeah. Good afternoon. And it seems like a day doesn't go by without another video. Another video. We are on top of it always. And I'm glad to have you here. You're a two-time robotics founder and you and I have done, I think at least 35, close to 40 videos now on every bot that we can get our hands on. So folks, if you haven't seen those, check those videos out. So let's start with Phoenix. This is a robot uh, from a company called Sanctuary. You and I just interviewed uh, Suzette, Suzanne Gildert, who's the chief technology officer at uh, Sanctuary. They're based in Vancouver, Canada. And they have a bot called Phoenix. And we're going to take a look at this video and um, you tell me what we're seeing when we're, we're playing it. Well, I think that the first thing you'll notice is that, you know, it's at one X and it's going at what is comparable speed to a human. And that's exactly what they said. The cycle time is the same as, uh, as it was done with a human. And right there, if we just freeze out for a second, it's fully autonomous. Uh, so the, uh, it's, you know, 1.5 seconds per part, which is typically what you do. You, you would measure what's the average speed that a human operator is able to do it and can you keep, keep up with it? So it's just doing simple component sortation, which means it's going to have to identify the part and where the final location is. And you might remember that from the, the Optimus video a few months ago, it was doing the same thing. It was, it was sorting different colored parts into different trays. And so they're demonstrating the same thing, but they're demonstrating that it's now kind of human equivalent speed. And they've got a couple of different examples of that. Oh, it dropped. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that thing, things will fall, but you know, that's, that's okay. It's just kind of moving ahead. And every time it does it, there's going to, um, it doesn't, sometimes a different cup will, will fall here and there. And those are things that are probably just going to be kind of trying to iron out going ahead to be able to make sure it's able to do it with, you know, hundred percent accuracy without actually uh, dropping anything over. But in that sense, we get an idea that, you know, it really is real. They're showing us also, um, you know, a, a lot of the, the, the issues with it are still some of the, the areas of improvement, um, but still the speed is very good. And the one thing I want you to notice, it's a little bit different than what we saw with the Optimus video, because we'll be able to show that again. Notice it's doing a two-handed sort. Okay, okay. that's the Optimus so, video. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So so the Optimus is a little bit slower. It does do a correction when it tips something over and it's identifying the parts. And we you know the, the human operator is able to come in there and move them around so it has to, to figure out you know where the new position of the part is and pick it up real time. And it's, it seems to be making that decision reasonably quickly uh, but again, this was a, a little bit slower um, than real time. So yeah, th this uh, this was yeah, this yeah. video was sped up, right? So yes. how much, how fast? Is I think it was one and a half times. So somewhere in there, when you, when you look at the video, they yes. actually do, do say uh, that it was sped up a little bit, and that was back in September with the the Gen One bot, and so the Gen Two bot's a little bit faster. And we've also seen Figure do the, sort of the same thing when it makes a mistake to try to self correct. And I'm sure Sanctuary is going to be able to do the same thing here, but they just want to demonstrate that they kind of have some good capability and two-handed, which is going to be great mm -hmm. because that means, you know, you can get uh, double the throughput on being able to do something like that. Um, the other thing that's nice about it is this video dropped, I think, just about an hour ago. And, um, you know, last night, another video dropped uh, from, from Agility. Yeah, uh, with Digit that. showing that's op operations. And notice they're giving us hard numbers here now. You know, they're, they're going in and it used to be they were just showing stuff, but no one was really telling any of the specific, uh, statistics or specs of what's going on to give us an idea where they really are in the progress every day we're getting one so all the bot vendors out there are, are realizing hey we want to drop a video at least once a week to counter what everyone else is doing so we're going to start getting these updates again and again and remember here today's wednesday normally you and i sit down and we create <laughs> a, a long form video for the weekend to release and unfortunately if we sit down and do this right now it's going yeah. to be out of date 
who knows? I mean, it's only Wednesday. We still have Thursday and Friday to go. And there's going to yeah. be something else. So we've got to cover this real time for everyone to know. And I love this competition because, you know, Tesla puts one out and then Figure reacts to that. And then, you know, then then you end up having, you know, Digit saying, uh, Agility saying, well, we're not going to be upstaged by these guys. And they're using a similar format. They're kind of starting out. They're saying, here's a status update. Here's a date that is going on. And here's a couple of numbers we want all of you to see. And so I think that's good to see because we can see the progress. And that just means they all want to start informing us of what's going on. Let's go ahead think, and show yeah. the other mm -hmm. news. Okay, mm -hmm. so the other one that came again just a few minutes ago, Agility Robotics. Oh, sorry, last night. Agility Actually, last Robotics, night, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drop this. Another day on the job, digit on the ground and real automation workflow. Uh, so let's go ahead and play this video. Okay. So, and, so, um, it's, it's, it, so I believe it, it is kind of a represent, re representative of what a customer is doing. I think it's it's more of a demonstration of the customer. It's not in there, but they're going through and validating so Let's pause it. there for a second. Yep. What does it say here? Dearly solution, put wall to automation. What does that mean? Put wall to automation. That seems to me is like the name of the company that they okay, gotcha. are, are, are doing it for. Um, yep. And your know, location customer is deployment. a customer deployment. You're getting ready for it. Fully autonomous. Fully autonomous. Which is great. 75% speed of a human. human speed. But right. this is a cool part right here. Seven point hours of continuous operation. We've never seen that before. Right. 97% success and, rate. And I'm hoping to get clarification enough? on that, on whether that seven and a half hours uh, between charges or, or did they take like a 15 minute break and get a boost? It doesn't look tethered. So they are moving around autonomously. And if they are able to get seven and a half hours out of one charge, that puts to rest this whole discussion of the bots won't have enough power to be able so it's to a real to time vid that. video here continuous work yes. footage from customer deployment it's pretty boring yes but it's real time footage and and it's and it's doing it at about 75 percent of the time it would take a human to do the same thing now it does a strange thing here i think it's it's just checking the content of the uh, mm -hmm. of the tote each time because there's like otherwise there's no reason for it to lift it up like that so that they probably have to do some sort of verification and then we Six see it sort of sped up moving around to get an idea that they're, yep. they're doing it more and more. Yep. Continuous okay. work footage yep. from customer deployment. So this is an yep. actual factory, not just a yep. demo site. That's not just some, uh, you know, f f living or meeting room or factory room of a vendor. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so you, you see it's moving around and I can see there's still like a lots of places that they can get a little bit of improvement. Again, I've, I've hammered this home that, the, the, the bots seem to be able to work pretty well in a straight line, but they're a little bit sluggish in being able to turn around. See, that, that's, you know, we, we will do that with a very quick pivot step as a human. And so there can be some improvement there when it goes back and forth. And then that's how you easily get your 100% without expending more energy. And if you do it right, you will do it with less energy. So it means it's a lot easier to perform that task uh, in, in that seven and a half hour time frame. And you know they they it wasn't 100% perfect. They're getting like I think uh, you know 97% um, accuracy, which is is not too bad. And again, these are the kinds of of tasks that you don't have to have extreme precision to do, which is why it's perfectly suited for a humanoid robot. You just have to be able to grab the tote uh, so you can actually move it. it. Doesn't have to be precisely grabbed, and you just have to get it close enough on the conveyor that it starts to move. And if you need uh, precision on the the, the position of the, a pallet going down the conveyor. Well, they have like these these wranglers that happen along the the way to be able to position these um, these parts if you need extreme precision. But in most cases, you, you don't need to. You just need to have it roughly centered on the conveyor. It's going to go off and it's just going to do its own thing and eventually kind of self position. Same thing you put in the shelf. It doesn't have to be that precisely uh, there. So it is something that a humanoid bot can do, even if a humanoid bot doesn't have the extreme position of some extreme industrial robots that are designed for very precise tasks. And even if it doesn't have the payload capability to lift a whole car body, it doesn't have to. It's able to do the same thing as a humanoid bot. And uh, so now we're seeing that uh, we were hearing questions like, oh, the bots, they're, they're going to run out of juice in an hour. They won't be able to make it through a whole shift. And so agility is now kind of showing us that. And it's going to be interesting is that, you know, CERN's going to have to get a spreadsheet together here. We're going to have to start looking at you know, who's doing these different first? Who's really deployed it in the factory first? Who's yeah. really been able to hit some particular benchmark of time? Who's been able to get closest to, to human rated speed? They're all getting there. And what's nice is because they're coming from different sources, it's it's more reliable. We, we, we can see that they're all being able to do it. You can have a lot more confidence that human bots are really coming.
Okay. So what we what I'd like to do now is we just showed you the two demos that was just dropped by Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are bots called human bots called Phoenix. Then you got one from Agility. Their bots called Digit. But mm -hmm. before we do that, I'm going to share more information about who Sanctuary is, who uh, Agility is, and then we're going to review the breaking news that we just did the last two days on Figure and on Tesla Bot. So I wanted to show that this, you know, this is a table uh, that we've created. Uh, if folks don't know, but um, Scott Walter, myself, CERN Basher, and Dr. John Gibbs, we all formed a company called Human Bots, and we are a consulting software consulting company to help uh, businesses out there to establish business cases, not only in humanoid utilization, but also human scale utilization. So think any bot out there that's ready that is able to be used. We have a whole database of them. So if you know of any company that would like to get a business case, just to understand what is the possible, have them reach out to us. We're also in the process of uh, uh, getting funding. So if anybody's interested, do that. Here's an example of a table that we created and we're comparing, again, this is not the full list. This is just a humanoid bot market, the top players as we know it. There's probably many more we haven't heard from, but we're keeping track. And the ones at the top are North American European based, and then the ones at the bottom are the uh, the Chinese based companies. And again, this is not based on it's not organized or prioritized based on anything here. We're just trying to keep track of what they've shown. And so now you can see the agility robotics digit. It has no hands. It it it, it kind of shows it can walk, but you see it. It's very different approach. And now we can make this a dark green. The demoing mm -hmm. of useful work because they've yes. now shown that there's a real vendor, a real customer that they're physically doing for 7.5 hours. The ability to communicate with it through voice and the ability for it to do autonomous work. And, uh, you know, and, and then I'll show that they are actually uh, building a factory now and maybe they will be first to deploy the bots. Their strategy is to, as I spoke to uh, the top executive there, she told me that their strategy agility is to get the customer in the uh, to get the bot in a customer's location as fast as possible so they can learn and then later build out the hands and build out, mm -hmm. build out the feet and so forth then you've got um sanctuary here phoenix and now you can see that it's walk uh, we haven't seen it walk publicly you'll notice that the demo that we dropped today is just the torso and up but it's able to walk fast it's uh, one of the best we can t turn this into a dark green because now they've they're now showing demoing that it can do autonomous work yes uh we'll, well this is uh, kind of a table that we're working on yeah. as you can see that we're going to continue to build this we will have the largest database that's out there of not only humanoid bots but also what we call human scale bots these are the bots that are waiters and delivering uh, you know, drinks at the restaurant. These are the bathroom cleaning bots, things that are very useful today. Lots of so, inventory and retail yeah. that you may have which seen. One, yep. mm -hmm. Which one do you want to start first? Who should we talk about first? Uh, do you want to talk okay, about Sanctuary or do you want to talk about... Uh, let, let's let's start with Agility because I think they've actually, um, their, their history goes back a little bit further. So uh, Agility uh, literally started from the ground up. So they, they started with the walking problem that, that came out of the university, I think, uh, Oregon State University. And uh, so they came up with a different kind of bipedal, which is known as a, a digitigrade, which is a type of animal that, you know, like a, like a flamingo or, you know, even like dogs have, um, have legs like that as well. Whereas humans are considered plantigrades because of the way we, we plant our ankles. So it may look like its knees are backwards. What looks like its knees is actually, that's the ankle. <laughs> and its knees are actually very up very high. And they've done that for a couple of reasons because it seemed like they were able to get, uh, you know, pretty good locomotion out of it. And also allows it to crouch down and grab something without the knees getting in the way. So a lot of times when you're trying to grab a box, a lot of times your knees in the way. So they're looking at it for practical reasons and also to be able to get some sort of speed. And they hold the the world record, or at least the uh, the prototype that it was developed on holds the the, the world record for a bipedal robot over the hundred meters. And it's like around 22 seconds. You know, it's it's half the speed of Hussein Bolt. But then again, anyone that can run half the speed of Hussein Bolt should be proud. <laughs> it's he's pretty fast. So uh, they're able to do that. And they were demonstrating this already about a year ago at the uh, PAC Expo uh, of, uh, of similar kind of operations like this. And the reason why they demonstrated it is like, this is very common. You see this at all kinds of places on the factory floor. It's that low hanging fruit. And it's one of those that you don't need to have fully formed hands to do it. So they're finding applications where you don't necessarily need fingers. You just need to have some sort of, of almost palm to be able to grab something. 
and they're starting to build in the um, the vision systems, the large language models to make it easy to communicate. I think we spoke about it in a previous video that with the large language model, they can give really vague instructions that have cultural references in it, and it will understand what's going on. So it was like, I remember it was like, uh, grab the box that's the color of Darth Vader's sword and bring it over to the uh, tallest stand. Okay. And so, you know, be four stands around there of various heights, and it was able to understand its environment and figure out exactly what you meant from it. So these large language models are now being integrated into these bots to make it easier to work with. And we're seeing they're doing what is actually useful work. They can't do all the jobs on the floor. It doesn't matter. They are starting to do some of them and they're able to do some of them with reliability and with a certain amount of um, also endurance, which is important. So I've talked about useful work in the past and what does useful work means. And it just means any task that is currently being done by a human that the robot is capable of replacing it by doing it with the same efficiency, same accuracy, the same endurance, and that cost parity. So if it costs $100 an hour for the bot to do it and it can like tick off all those other uh, check marks on there, it doesn't make sense to put the bot in there. It's going to have to be at whatever the current wage structure is. So what that means is that um, it's a little bit tough for the bots. I mean, they, they're going to have to work hard because you can say, oh, if I've got a bot that I can operate for $15 an hour, I can go and start replacing all the $25 or $30 an hour jobs, right? Well, it might be those jobs are kind of tough. And right now the bot can't do it yet. So it's going to have to go for the lower wage jobs. The thing is, um, you know, that's tougher then because, you know, now you're competing at a lower level, even if you have the, um, the technical capability to be able to do it. So the bots have to get their prices down. They have to also improve their skill level uh, to be able to take them. Now, they are not replacing humans. It may seem like it, but what they're doing is they're filling in unfulfilled positions or unfilled positions at this point that, uh, factories are having very difficulty finding workers to remain, keep it staffed. And um, so for the most part, it's just going to be through attrition that you're doing things like okay, that. Yeah. All right. So this is agility digit, as you mentioned, look at them. Mm -hmm. They're very different. They're, they're mm -hmm. not designed. They're designed really specifically for the factory. Yes. Uh, they can bend low. They, they're cheap to make or more efficient to make and yes. so forth. And so I just wanted to point out here too, that, you know, they're, they're the first to mm -hmm. announce the very first humanoid robot factory called the RoboFab. They're about to build this factory that can um, then can build 10,000 robots per year in Portland, year. Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So they are moving fast and this is their job. They're going to create yes. this. And um, this is their kind of, a, you know, I and, don't know, and they've already made a, a fairly good number of it because I've seen a lot of the videos that they've had and you'll see videos where there's a, a lot of digits in it, not just, just one or two, but actually quite a few. And there's some videos that are actually quite old that are what to do when you you get your your um, your agility bot when you get digit that will show you actually how to take it out and set it up and configure it and everything else just like you know if you get your Roomba you know what how do you configure it and download the app and whatever else so it's been out there customers have been have been able to buy this already um, you know it's it's starting to mature a bit and again you know the factory they're setting up they I believe some of the people that they've hired in there a couple of them have come out of Apple. Okay. Remember what Apple just did yesterday. Again, that was like other breaking news is that Apple canceled their car project, the Apple car project. And now I'm wondering, it's like, oh, what are you going to do with all the cost savings that you're not, you're not spending billions of dollars trying to come up with, a, yeah, with an autonomous bots. electric vehicle? And you've got a lot of these skilled programmers. Maybe they're realizing there's something there. But you have people um, at, at, um, at Agility that have already mm -hmm. kind of background with supply chain. They're coming up with a footprint that's about the size of a super Walmart, okay? It's not like it's a huge factory. And from that, they believe they can make 10,000 bots. 10,000 is a big number, but it comes down to uh, making something like 40 a day. So it's it's not like a huge number that that over the course of a year, you can go ahead and do that. The other thing is, is the customer they have in there, that doesn't sound like a Fortune 100 company to me, does it? I mean, we know they're all looking around, you know, how these are going to help us in their business. Some of the, the small businesses out there are also taking note and also getting themselves in the front of the line um, wow. to going ahead and do it. And props to them that, that they're going to be one of the, the first companies to scale. And if I was one of their competitors, I'd be a bit nervous right now because they may be able to start producing uh, their componentry for cheaper. Yeah. Now we already talked yeah, about this. Yeah. Um, it's 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 not like one competitor is going to beat the other competitor. Everybody's going to make their bots. They're going to sell their bots. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking the about funding. the people. I'm talking about the people that are using them. That's the thing. 
Is, oh, is yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes, yes. So, so if, now that the, the people that are bringing yeah. them in, yes. So, yeah, if you're a customer, if you're a vendor, yeah. if you are a business today, your target, and you get hold of a thousand bots, and Walmart doesn't get it for five or ten years because this is mm. supply mm -hmm. constrained, you could basically, you know, reduce your price. No, I don't know if thousands enough for those, that size business. Okay, so that's Digit from a company called Agility. The other company that we showed the demo with is uh, Phoenix. And Phoenix is now able to do autonomous work. Here they're demonstrating this pick and place, but they're doing it at human speed. This is it. So let's let's share them information about who Phoenix, Phoenix is. Uh, Scott Walter and I interviewed Dr. Suzanne Gildert, and um, that was a very good interview. But basically, their strategy is to get to AGI, right? Uh, Artificial mm -hmm. General Intelligence. And they think that you have to have a humanoid uh, embodied format and uh, so they're working on all aspects of it. And you can see here that they've got the hands, they got the feet, they got uh, uh, things that they need. They may be a little bit behind in terms of their development of the bot, but um, they've certainly got the experience uh, to make this happen. So they've already, mm -hmm. they've already implemented a bot a demo in a retailer store last year. And again, they're just talking about all the unfulfilled jobs that are out there. And this is Suzanne Gildert that we interviewed they're focusing heavily on the fingers and the hands, and they actually have the sensors there as well. Uh, that's one of the things that they thought was important. Yes, and some of those things. And so um, Gordy Rhodes pretty much put out um, a white paper explaining the you know the triangle that they need to be, see to be solved. And one is that you need to have you know good hands, the dexterity that's there. You need to have a brain, and you need to have mobility. And they've been focusing on two parts of of that triangle, not so much on the mobility. Um, they have a certain degree of mobility of being able to move it around. I think, you know, probably it's, it's mounted on a cart. Um, and they already have a design for going bipedal, but they decided that's not necessarily the challenge right now. You see, there are a lot of bots that are able to walk and it's like, uh, okay, so we know that's a solvable problem, but this is not yet solved. So they're trying to go into that space. You'll also look at that. The hands have a bit more dexterity than some of the other hands that are out there because you talked about it's able to do what they call abduction, adduction, or like kind of splaying the hands out. Uh, and there is a, a shot of it doing. We just lost you, Scott. A shot of the uh, live long and prosper. That, yes. Yeah. yeah. Is that the, the neck motion has full three degrees of freedom motion, uh, which is something that Suzanne feels is, is very important to make sure that the the mobility of the bot matches the human capabilities as closely as possible. Uh, and that's partly because of the teleoperation that's going on there. And also if you're going to be training, you want to have much better mapping. And she's already concerned that, you know, they have some movement in the hands, but they've discovered, ah, you know, the joint movement that we have going back and forth this way, it turns out to not actually be enough, which kind of surprised me because they have some there, but they realize, oh, they've got to open up that degree of freedom a bit more to match what they're getting from the tele uh, robotic control. And, and they want the full uh, head motion probably to also match when they're gathering telerobotic data and also to give them more of a sense of uh, a kind of a personality because, you know, that's, eh, yeah. you know, that's one of those things that we could use to be able to communicate. So uh, that's the avenue they're going in, making sure it's very important to have it. And, and they're even looking to potentially add another degree of freedom that um, I was really su surprised and pleased to, to hear Suzanne talk about that is potentially adding another one on the shoulder to allow the arms to kind of move forward. It's kind of an eighth degree of freedom we have in our arms that um, it seems like it's maybe not important, but talking to some biomechanics, they feel like, oh, it would be really nice to have that in the bot. So that's something you'll see eventually. But right now, that's getting ahead of their skis. You know, you need to solve these other problems first. What's what's very cool is that this video I'm playing here, these were mm -hmm. dropped two, three months ago, and you can see yes. how slow the bot moves. Right. They're just mm -hmm. trying to show you, uh, and and it's very slow. But here's what they dropped this morning, just now. Right, right. right. And they just and dropped the, this. Yes. This mm -hmm. is human speed. Uh, hold on. Is this? Yeah. This is human speed. Now it's moving this much faster. This is how yes. quick these bots are. Uh, humanoid bot vendors are progressing. People keep saying, like, there's somebody last night who said, oh, I'll show you the fig. We just, we saw the figure demo and we show, broke that two days ago. And the comment was, somebody said, here's the, here's the demo that we showed two days ago. And somebody was going, yeah, that's cool. But it'll take them forever to get this thing to move faster. And this is a Brett Adcock, the CEO of Figure Robotics, said that they spent zero time trying to make this bot move faster. All of this was to train it to be end-to-end -end autonomous works. Everything you're seeing here, mm -hmm. the bot has learned 
uh, through videos, just by watching humans do it, it figured it out and knew how to walk up to the uh, pick and place. It can, it can, uh, you can move the location of the pick and you can move the location of the place and it'll still know what to do. And it's able to move and it's very painfully slow. And you point out that the turning, the pivoting is so critical, but there's all, there's, it's like a shuffle so slow, but it's able to identify where it needs to put it the place. Mm -hmm. It knows how to move its fingers and thumb to actually grab the tote and move it and, and everything looks great, but it's painfully slow. But here you go showing you what happens when you actually do want to demo a, you know, it's not going to be, I, I mean, what do you think, Scott? How hard is it yes. to now speed it up once you've figured out how to do something autonomously? It won't be hard. It's, it's part of the mechanics. And if you stop there right now, you'll see it says control autonomous accelerated limitation or, or, or accelerated imitation. imitation. Okay. Imitation. Okay. I was, I read that first as limitation. So, um, um, oh, so if it, so pretty much it's probably learning very quickly. So it may not be like one shot, but they're able to give it some training. Well, that's why it, that's why it dropped set. it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This one yes. was fine, but the second one here, th this one. Okay. So this one, this, see the second part, this is the second mm -hmm. segment. I'm in the yes. second segment. I'm halfway through the video. Yeah. This one, they accelerate the imitation. And so you can see when they go, okay, I really want you to move fast. You'll see that this time it grabs something, but it drops. It drops. Yes. See there? Yes. And, and that's mm -hmm. because they decided to make it go faster, go faster, go yeah. faster. Yeah. So, the, so they're they're pumping along, and so we know the mechanics can do it, and it's and a lot of it is going to be a question of how rapidly the neural networks can respond to what they see to make sure they're able to to generate the, that motion quick enough. That's going to be coming pretty quickly. The um, and and we'll notice that there's two similar applications of what Figure did and also what Agility did, and that is being able to move um, basically uh, totes from one location and and bring it over to a conveyor system to be able to do that feeding, and we can see there's a lot of places for room for improvement without the bot actually having to move faster. It's more or less like making uh, better decisions or quicker decisions or going ahead and dropping that thing right away. You know, you're, you're there, it's taking a long time to make that decision and obviously the pivot. So just that pivot alone will go a long ways. And again, you notice it's, it's rather interesting that, uh, that Agility decided to release a video where they said, okay, we're 75% human speed. You know, figure, mm -hmm. we'll see you and we'll call you. We saw your video. We're going to release yeah. one in a similar format and we're going to do 75%. <laughs> Not yeah, yeah. to be outdone, you know, then Sanctuary yeah. says, hey, we got one that's full human speed. We want to show that as well. So, yeah, I, I have a feeling, you know, Brett's kind of competitive. He's going to fire back pretty soon and they're going to come up with something else that's going to wow us. So, uh, so keep it coming. And this this is this yeah. is, uh, this is exciting to be able to see everything. This Mm -hmm. This drop right after Figure dropped their video that we just watched, and then this is oh, this Elon was this saying, is before this is this. Say so we got <laughs> the events get kind of. I got it confused. Yeah, Tommy, vi vi video. Uh, this... Okay, Figure closed their their Series B funding round. Yes, yes. And this came out the next day, and then yeah. Figure countered with that two days later with their video. Gotcha. And then Agility gotcha. countered, and then Sanctuary countered. And now we're waiting on Aptronic. Come on, you got to yeah. come up with one now. And, and all of and this also, dropped and, this week, we also less had, than six days yes, ago. Yeah. And I think what maybe maybe eight or nine days ago, because this seems like ancient yeah. history right now. Remember, One X yeah. also showed what they're doing, and and they've well, also got, got some. Video. Yeah, we got that one, and and that one is going to be, you know, they're working on some stuff as well. That the in in the coming you know weeks or months, we're going to also hear some interesting things from One X. So they're all moving. And um, they're they're all going to be showing, you know, what is their uh, investing a little bit in robotic capability. So this was like well over a year ago. This is the, their Eve bot, and uh, showing some of the capabilities it was able to do. But they've been around a while, so this is not a startup. They they've been at it since I think like uh, maybe 2015, 2016, and learning how to train a lot of these models. And then this is the more recent one where they're showing kind of the final evolution of the Eve model, and you know what you can do with wheels. And you see, um, setting up the wheels there takes a bit of a footprint, you know, and, and, and moving around. So it might be okay in certain um, environments, but it's not ideal, which is why everyone is thinking going bipedal, including 1X. So 1X already has a bipedal bot that's in operation. You notice yeah, these little ramps they have to have sometimes because when you go from yeah. one floor level to another, if you've got steps, it's not going to work. So that's kind of the reason why you may not want to have legged and or may not want to have wheeled and, and may want to go to legged. Um, and they're going to having full five-digit hands uh, in, you know, in there in their initial training. They're just doing it with two. 
uh, with with these claspers. But you see, they have I think uh, you know somewhere around twenty of these e-bots going around doing various operations and training on that. Also yeah. end to end. Okay. So they're yeah. end to end. It looks like agility is probably end to end. Sanctuary is probably end to end. We're pretty sure Tesla has also been showing everything that's end to end. Of course, figure. Yeah. Um, so no one we're watching is here. not being end to end anymore. They're, they all are. Exactly. So they're all autonomous now. So what we're seeing here yep. is a company called yep. One X. It's a Norwegian mm -hmm. company backed by Google, yep. I believe. Yes. And they have this Eve robot with the with the wheels, and you can see yep. everything here. This is yes. all 100%. They're they're telling us all these bots are all working end to end autonomy, which means that they're just autonomy now. They're just learning things on their mm -hmm. own. They have wheels. They don't have hands, and but they can bend up and down. But this is Eve. The next version mm -hmm. is called Neo, and Neo will be a full humanoid with yeah. hands. And now you notice when it goes to the door, you, you need to have a little yeah. ramp there. You're going to notice that there's yeah. kind of door jams with doors closed. That's very typical in Nordic and Scandinavian countries. They keep the the air drafts down. So mm -hmm. it's Don't a little, jams. it's actually challenging to go around with the wheels because you're going to be bumping into those things. You know, normally yeah. in North America, we're used to those not being there. So they don't become a trip hazard, but they are actually there. So you would have to make something for the wheeled vehicle to be, you know, that's just why it's going to be easier overall to have a bipedal um, yeah. uh, bot meantime, able to work in any uh, environment. Yeah. Tesla bot obviously showed this. You said, when was this? A long time ago now. How many months oh, ago? I think it was last like September. I think, I think okay. it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were September where they were showing that Tesla is got end-to-end -end autonomy. They mm -hmm. watched videos and then this is able to be trained to say, move the blocks from one side to the other. It can drop, it can correct itself. If you move it, it'll know what to do. And you can see that. Now they did speed this up. So September, they were slow, but they were just trying to show that they have autonomous skills. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to visualize and so forth. So it's really hard hard today to know who's ahead we still believe that tesla is still ahead um for for from everything walking finger dexterity autonomy um you know just seems to be much more potentially ahead, scalability because they, they know how gen 2 so scalability. yeah so we we kind of saw this and that was sort of the the end of the evolution of this one because it it was only what uh was early december so i think that maybe that was even october when we, we saw that video and then we didn't see anything for a while and suddenly gen 2 bot comes up and uh so they already were saying okay the, the gen 1 we're not going to do much more with it we've got a new design they have that it looks like it's way more compact you know the, a lot of the issues i had with gen 1 they cleaned it up you know obviously a, a lot of the cabling and the hardest things that are around there it looks like it's going to be easier to manufacture and it just looks um, more natural now you know um figure they're still working with their, their first generation bot Yeah. Still there? I think we lost you. This is Figure that's showing autonomously working on a Keurig machine. And the interesting thing about the way Figure does things is that it watches video of a it watches a human doing it, not a video. The video the camera the robot is watching a human do it. But what's really cool about it was this part right here where you can see that it made a mistake right here. It makes them when it puts the cup in, but it makes a mistake, so then it knows how to fit it again using its thumb there or okay. finger there to make it back yeah we yes lost okay for a while Scott. okay yeah back. i wasn't sure what what dropped um so um it looks like they were trying some new way to be able to train to figure that they get remarkable results much quicker than they expected so it was like oh we tried something and my goodness it worked and so it seems like a, a very simple demo but it was all about how it was trained and it was trained not telerobotically and it, it was trained on observing humans doing that particular operation getting enough in the, in the training set and suddenly now the bot was able to imitate that as well as self-correct so we saw that in a couple of cases the the Keurig cup did not get put in quite correctly and it kept on doing it until it got it right so um that shows you that the capability to to teach these bots is getting better and better so we can expect more of that and as they get more data they are just going to become way more capable and then they'll probably yeah. start focusing more on things like, you know, how do you get the speed up there and everything else? And th there are ways of getting the speed. The only only problem is if you crank it up too much, then you consume so much power that you can't get the endurance out of it. So it, it's, it's that balance of trying to figure out how to do it. And I believe that the AI systems, as they get enough exposure, mm -hmm. will be more clever on how they plan their overall motions. Uh, and there is a quote, it's, kind of, it's, it's partially in my head. I, I, I should find the language perfectly. But um, it was Jensen Huang of, um, uh, of NVIDIA. 
And he said, you know, we, we can, we basically can have large language models that allow us to generate, you know, give it text and it will generate text for us. Now we can give it text and it will generate art, art. and images and, and videos. We can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big stretch to imagine that we can give it text and it will generate motion. Really, it so, so it'll generate motion, and, and, yeah. and it'll generate motion, and so you're going to start seeing that 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 goes in, and of course, when you say, and it could be either, and or eventually, there'll also be like these VLMs where you'll train it by you know imitation or showing it videos, but in the end, it's going to come down to yeah, we tell it what we want it to do, and so the training set may be like lots and lots of videos showing all kinds of different examples like that, but eventually, it's going to tokenize everything and understand it, label it. And then have a description that matches your language, and then you just tell it, "Go ahead and do this." That's uh, that's gonna be wild. And then the, wild, the, yeah. those motions will be, um, you know, they'll almost be playing it kind of like a chess game, where they will be looking many moves ahead, and as a result, your movement will be very, very smooth. So yeah. even if you look at what the Tesla bot was doing walking around, that's a kind of path planning that they have in robotics, where they do this look ahead. So it, you you could teach a robot one point at a time industrial bot and what they'll do is they'll go to that point and stop and they'll go to the next point and stop and you kind of see the acceleration deceleration what they do is they do what's called flyby but in order to flyby you have to look at the point after your goal where where is that you're going so you can calculate the trajectory make sure you maintain the speed and everything else so there's a sense of a little bit of a look ahead and i think you're gonna have the same idea of look aheads with tasks that okay i i know i need to grab that thing over there but I'm going to break it down into that. I have to walk up to it and approach it. Then I have to grab it and then bring it on over somewhere else. Well, combine that thing, combine the whole idea of approaching, getting your arm out there and actually grasping it, taking concepts of momentum and going into it as you grab that tote. And now which way am I going left or right? Well, now redirect your momentum that way. So you're a lot quicker and you can do that without having to make the bot faster. You just have to make the bot a little bit smarter. And what does that do? It saves energy and it saves time. And if you do both those things, you get closer to useful work, right? Because now I can work eight hours because I'm not, you know, burning my energy budget. I'm trying to get that one particular task fast. And then, you know, the, yeah. so, yeah, and we're getting it faster and we're getting it smoother. And when you get it smoother, that means less wear and tear. I mean, it's just like this, this virtuous yeah. cycle that you go through that you get the improvement. And a lot of that's going to come through good software. Okay, let me let me re recap what's happened and tell me well, how important this is. So the first one, of course, is Agility Robotics. They dropped a video of their digit in the factory in a customer, but the whole point was it's 7.0 hours long. So tell me what you think if this is really critical. I mean, so obviously it's Putwall is a customer, it's a customer deployment, it's fully autonomous, it's 75% the speed of a human, but it's seven point hours of continuous work. So they showed it working here slowly, and then they sped up the video to show you that, boy, this thing kept working for 7.5 hours. They don't say if they had to charge it or anything like that, but how big of a deal is this? In the customer location, 7.5 hours, and I think they said at the beginning, right? What is it? 97% uh, success rate. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. Is this ready it's, to be sold? It's pretty close. I mean, I, ideally, you would like to have, um, you know, over 99% on your success rate. And, you know, that success mm -hmm. rate is probably what they're measuring as like OEE. Um, and if um, it's just, you know, a little bit more training, uh, you know, every now and then. And with the success rate, I'm not sure if it means it completely fails or it has to kind of redo it or restart or something like that. You know, humans, we make mistakes also out there, and then we just are able to go ahead and correct it. Um, that 7.5 hours, I mean, that kind of surprised me because I remember you know, looking at their website, and I think they were looking at continuous operation of, of maybe around three hours, and they said something like, you know, maybe uh, eight eight hours in, in like a 10-hour day. I have to, have, have to double check that. But, you know, there would be charging along there to be able to get the, the, the longer runtime. So if they're actually doing seven and a half hours That's amazing. on, on That's a enough. single charge, that would be great, which means they're super energy efficient on, on how they're mm -hmm. doing it. And they've got mm -hmm. a pretty good battery pack in there. To be able to, but, you know, they might be getting a little bit, because remember, we've talked about that one of the tricks to being able to do um, a full day of operation is that the humans are on break too. So there may be like some idle time there where they're not needed to do anything because yeah. if humans are requiring parts and everything else and they're off to lunch, well, you don't need to feed them the parts yet. So you're going to notice that you're not getting any orders and you probably go over and get that boost charge a little bit. And anyone's driven a Tesla on a long trip, you know, it's like you charge it overnight to get it up to 100% and you go for your ride and you get it down to a certain amount and then you stop somewhere and you don't bring it back up to 100%. You just kind of get that quick boost in there 
And actually a series of small stops along the way makes more sense than one stop where you're trying to charge all the way up. So it'll be the same thing. And we, you know, humans are doing that too. We get, we've got a morning break, we have a lunch break and we have one or two afternoon breaks as well, coffee breaks in there. So that would be more enough to do it. And so I don't know if they're using that strategy. Hopefully they see either this video or, or my reply to the post to find out whether it was continuous, um, you know, really on one, one charge, but still, uh, I think what they're showing is, is that the bot was able to continue to do this operation kind of, you know, without failures, which means it's so close. And now they did not put it out there as saying that, okay, we're doing useful work or we really are doing these jobs as a factor. Or it's, it's, in, it's on the job, but it's showing us yeah. it's getting pretty close, you know, yeah. and it's, not and it's just going to matter. A human and yeah. when, when, okay. and I think one of them is going to make that announcement at some point where they will really be able to say it's yeah. really doing it. So, and not only is it just doing it for, for one job, it's like doing a whole work week. You know, it's showing yeah. up like what everyone else does and it, it's working and it's making it through. And, um, and that will also, I think, be a big milestone. And whoever gets that, yeah. I mean, that, that's going to be a well-deserved uh, medal. Absolutely. And at the whole point, though, is going so much faster than everybody thinks. Every, they used to say five years from now, it's happening on a monthly basis here. So the next move, next uh, news was Gordy Rose, who is the CEO of uh, Sanctuary. Um, mm -hmm. And they have a bot called Phoenix, and he dropped this. Phoenix is now autonomously completing simple tasks at human equivalent speed. This is an important step on the journey to full autonomy. Phoenix is unique among humanoids in its speed, precision, and strength all critical for industrial applications. So if mm -hmm. you watch their video, Scott, you can see that it doesn't have legs, but it can move as fast as a human is, is what they're trying to demonstrate here. It can pick and place, it can use both hands at the same time um, just to demonstrate, and this is autonomous. So how big of a deal is this? Well, I think it's gonna be because, because there's also gonna be a lot of tasks like that where maybe the mobility is not needed right away. You know, obviously if to do the same thing, that digit is doing or figure is doing it's going to need wheels but there's going to be a lot of these sort of sorting operations like where strawberries just sitting there yeah whatever yeah. yeah or you're sitting on a line and you're sitting there non-stop um we don't know you know in this case if it really is stationary it can be tethered you don't care about the battery life at that point because there is no no need for a battery and it'll be able to sit there and do it non-stop and clearly you know they're making what might be a few mistakes because something accidentally fell over or they didn't quite place it right because they're trying to go fast that's stuff that will improve over time and it will be depend upon the application. So that's not necessarily a real application, but it is a sorting challenge that they'd be able to measure what the human's able to do, verify that's there. And then, and they've done, I think some sorting tasks already in some retailers up in Canada. So they have an idea, they have a data set there. Um, and I'm sure eventually they're going to go in there and start doing these things. And it could be, you know, light packing and stuff like that. You, you have a lot of situations where, you may have fruit or something like that that needs to be picked up and sorted and put into different containers. You know, again, like here, you know, this, this is a, a good example. And if they can start doing something like that, then that means uh, those tasks will start to be taken over by the bots. Yeah. Look at the bot. This is gen one. This is like a gen two. I think uh, uh, Suzanne Gilder told us that they're already at gen six. Yes. Right? Yes. And so there, this, this video that we just saw show, showed here, they're probably Gen 6, Gen 7. Look at it. It looks clean, much cleaner than these mm -hmm. videos here that we were watching just, just, just two, three months ago, guys. This video dropped. This one here I'm showing you three months ago. Look at it. They still mm -hmm. have wires, they have cables sticking out. They're moving very slow. Um, you know, you can see this big thing. And now this is what it looks like today. So it really is. Now there's uh, a, there's a good chance the video that they were showing there, because I think based on the light mode there so that light mode it's there dark. is yeah. it's, it's autonomous the other one i think was like the teleobotic mode so oh, yeah so it's think about the, you're port saying here's the reason if, yeah if you yeah, look at the so chest the, and you see a white mode that means it's autonomous yes. correct right but Whereas then the other if one you're was, looking at this one here it's still oh it's orange it's a purple I, I, purple I believe, blinking yes yes so i believe it's probably teleautonomously controlled at that point and yeah. think about it the reason why it's slow is the teleoperator is is having a challenging time doing all that stuff. I see. It's not easy being a teleoperator trying to pick those things up, but that's where they're getting the training data. And once they get enough, then they can start gotcha. running it at an accelerated rate.
That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Scott. Mm -hmm. That was great. Two new demos. We really, literally, if you look at my YouTube channel on live, you'll see breaking, 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 and people get upset with me. Is it breaking? Yes, it's breaking because they just dropped it within 24 hours. That's my rule. <laughs> but yes, Scott and I, yes, yes. And as a matter always... of fact, it was, as I, I had to inform you, it's like, oh, by the way, and this is just before we were getting ready to record this for the weekend, it's like, yeah, oh, did you one. just see this one here? This thing, And you're like, what? Wait a minute. I, I'm still looking at the agility ones. Like, here we go. Yeah. Just <laughs> and too again, many like, of these. We get Thursday dropping. tomorrow. It must be Aptronic day tomorrow. We'll see. It's going to be another one. Okay, yep. it's fun. Thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate your yep. time and teaching us everything that's happening. Thank you, everybody. See you yeah, soon. Thank Bye -bye. you, too.